And now I'm going to uh, introduce the general object detection with MM detection. So first, I, I, I also need to introduce myself. So I'm currently a young researcher at uh, Shanghai Air Lab, graduated from the S Lab in uh, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. So I have been a co-maintainer of the OpenML project since uh, 2019. I have led the release of MM Engine, and I have led the development of MM Detection, MM Detection 3D, MM Rotate, and MM Tracking. Uh, so first, what is uh, uh, object detection? So a uh, general meaning of the object detection basically uh, includes uh, these three tasks uh, uh, also supported in MM detection. So the first one is object detection, uh, uh, which predicts a set of bounding boxes of things. So also we, uh, in a more general meaning, uh, it also includes instant segmentation. So uh, it requires to further segment things and Sometimes we also uh, include the task of uh, panoptic segmentation because uh, it also needs to predict a set of marks of things and stuff. So, uh, so why object detection is challenging? Basically, uh, as you can see from the picture, uh, the object detection models they need to uh, predict multiple outputs. Uh, you can see that uh, there are various number of objects in different images, and there are multiple types of outputs. Uh, basically, you need to uh, predict what uh, and predict where. And uh, for segmentation, you also need to precisely uh, segment each pixel for the instances. Also, you can see that there are um, four occlusions and small objects in the images, and we need to uh, detect them accurately. So a uh, traditional uh, or classical idea to handle the object detection basically uh, adopts a sliding window idea. Uh, so basically, uh, if uh, we need to go through the whole, uh, each grid or each region of the image, and we find some uh, highly potential uh, region candidates, and then we uh, do a process uh, detection and loca uh, localization and classification for each region. So the, uh, this, uh, the idea originates from the ASEAN series, uh, from the ASEAN and to the uh, final faster ASEAN. So basically uh, it takes a regional propos region proposal network to go through each uh, great features of the, of the image and, uh, uh, and generates region proposals. And for each proposal, it will, uh, uh, crop the original features and use the uh, lightweight RCN head to do the classification and the bounding box regression. And uh, this idea also extends to mask RCN. So basically simply adding a convolutional branch uh, into the fast RCN, we could uh, conduct instant segmentation efficiently. So, uh, so we know that uh, there are many uh, challenges in object detection. So the uh, one uh, very obvious challenge is the uh, occlusion and the small objects. So to handle this, uh, a very it is also a very traditional or classical idea in computer vision that we could use multi-scale features. So uh, so uh, there are uh, there are a long time that people explore different. Uh, much scale feature enhancement. Uh, a very classical one is the uh, feature pyramid network, uh, which uh, used the feature pyramid network to replace the original uh, one feature and uh, conduct the uh, detection and the classification in each feature pyramid. And it also takes a divide and conquer strategy. Basically, we detect small objects in the more high resolution feature maps and detect uh, uh, large objects in the small feature maps. Oh, this idea also uh, can be extended to the panoptic segmentation. So a very uh, classic baseline for panoptic segmentation is to use the feature pyramid and uh, uh, conduct a panoptic segmentation on the uh, enhanced feature maps. And uh, so uh, to, uh, as we know that the two stage approaches for the object detection, they uh, face many issues. Uh, uh, they might be slow and, uh, and uh, uh, there are many operators like the ROI line, uh, they are uh, sometimes hard for the deployment. So uh, now people are more uh, tend to use the one-stage detectors in like the Euro series, and 
uh, they, uh, I also introduced a classic uh, one stage detect uh, named the Retina Net. Basically, it used the uh, feature pyramid network and a conduct detection at each uh, at each feature pyramid, and uh, uh, it also uh, find that uh, the uh, the the imbalance issue between the positive and negative samples. So it also introduces focal loss uh, to balance the learning issues and. Uh, the later improvements are based on uh, based on the uh, based on the retina net like the uh, like the anchor free object detectors. Uh, so more recent methods uh, they explore the uh, transformers for object detections. So the key idea is to represent each object or the pixel groups by the queries. And once the CN extracts the features and the transformer encoder will enhance the features and the transformer decoder will uh, conduct the set operation uh, to uh, uh, use the each query to represent an object and, uh, and, and do the classification and the bounding box regression on the each uh, query features. Also, and uh, this idea uh, I extended to the instance segmentation and so as the panoptic segmentation. So basically it segments things and starts uh, unanimously by the dynamic kernels or the mask embeddings originates from the queries. Uh, I, I would also like to uh, introduce more recent methods uh, in, in the new trend in the computer vision community. So uh, the most important idea is to use the sequential modeling uh, for the object sets. So uh, we also witnessed the a large uh, progress in the uh, uh, neural language processing field. So uh, inspired by this, uh, the pixel to sequence uh, show that a diverse set of core computer vision tasks uh, can be unified in terms of a shared pixel to sequence interface. Uh, including the object detection, instance segmentation, key point detection, and image captions. So the key idea is that uh, the set of objects, uh, a set of bounding boxes, and the set of instance masks, they can be represented by a sequence. So we could uh, use a unified sequential modeling decoder to model these tasks. And uh, as you can see that, uh, the box and the mask points and the key points and so as the uh, language words, they can all be solved in a unified framework by a single model. So uh, this idea uh, can be also uh, further extended uh, by the recent progress in large language models. So basically, uh, if we have a pre-trained large language model, so we could also add the backbone and the uh, uh, language guided image recognizer basically transforms uh, takes the image features as a foreign language to the large language models and align the visual centric tasks with the language tasks uh, that can be flexibly defined and managed using the language instructions. So as you can see that um, um, a language uh, based encoder uh, based decoder can then make appro appropriate predictions based on the instructions for different uh, visual centric tasks. So this method is called Vision ALM recently proposed by the Shanghai AI Lab. Uh, also, uh, there is a new, uh, uh, I will also introduce the segment anything model by Meta. So it is a foundation model for segmentation channel on uh, 11 million images. So the model is designed to be uh, to be trained uh, to be trained portable, and so it can transfer to zero shot and to new image distributions and uh, tasks. And uh, so, uh, as you can see, that uh, uh, recently uh, in the past two months, uh, you will see many applications based on the set. Uh, one example is to uh, is the segment any. Uh, any point cloud sequences, uh, which could use the same as a foundation model and used off the shelf uh, instance or uh, staff masks and use it to teach uh, uh, the model to segment uh, any point cloud sequences in the 3D world. So uh, basically uh, MM detection supports uh, many classic and recent uh, object detectors. Uh, as you can see that uh, we support fast and fast RCN since the uh, 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 original uh, uh, proposed in 2014. 
And uh, we also support the most recent methods like uh, Dino and Mask 2 formal. And we also support open vocabulary detectors like uh, Datic and uh, the recent methods diffusion debt, which introduced the diffusion uh, process to, for object detection. And uh, these methods includes uh, two-stage and multi-stage detectors and single-stage detectors and the transformer-based models. Uh, also, we uh, there is a one recent uh, one-stage detector proposed uh, by the MM detection team, which names is uh, RTM debt, uh, which tacked on the uh, real-time modeling. Uh, real-time usages for the industrial uh, requirements. So uh, basically, M detection uh, adopts a very uh, flexible modular design, as you can see. Uh, for the conventional one-stage or two-stage detectors, and uh, for the object detection and the instant segmentation, uh, it up adopts a two-stage pipeline. And... Uh, uh, including the backbone, neck, and the dense head, and our head. So uh, there are, we also introduced some fine grained modulus in the dense head, including the uh, sample and the target and the loss, loss, uh, loss layers. And uh, there are also uh, many our heads. Uh, so all one stage detectors can uh, also be a regional proposal network in the most recent ML detection. So, which means that uh, you can use uh, like F calls or Sentinel in a classic fast RCN pipeline to further enhance the performance of one stage detectors. Also, for the uh, detection transformers, we adopt a very simple design for the detection transformers. And uh, we uh, use the transformer encoder and the transformer decoder. And for the after the decoder, we have a, a detection head. Uh, we should do the training logic, including the target assignment, and do the prediction tasks. And uh, such a design uh, introduces a very few encapsulation, and it allows very easy extension. For example, if we want to distill uh, from the detection transformers, uh, it will become much easier by directly uh, use the features uh, output by the decoder. So. Uh, for, uh, for now, uh, ML detection has already supported many algorithms in 2023. 20, uh, uh, we cover uh, basically all kinds of detection frameworks, and we provide rich backbone networks, uh, including the most recent Convex V2, and you can use all the backbones uh, in, in the MM classification, or now the MM MM pretend, and all the backbones in the TIMM. We also uh, provide abundant uh, general plugins like the IPN and uh, also the deformable attention used by the deformable DTR. We also uh, provide some uh, very sufficient training uh, techniques, including uh, the very strong augmentations like uh, auto augmentation and a simple copy paste. We also now support uh, semi-supervised learning methods, including the most uh, convention, uh, most uh, uh, mostly used uh, methods, uh, mean teacher and the state of the art methods, software teacher. And uh, it, uh, ML detection also has a thorough support in ML deploy. Basically, uh, we have 18 algorithms and uh, supported by five backends. And uh, the task, uh, tasks covers the object detection and instant segmentation. So, uh, now, uh, MM detection serves as a foundation of detection related libraries in Open MM Lab. So, as you can see, that uh, based on MM detection, uh, there are MM detection 3D and MM OCR and MM Rotate. They are all uh, based on the MM detection and use it as a core library. And there are also many libraries uh, depends on the MM detection. And uh, I also want to introduce you that our recent work, MM Euro, which uh, integrates many uh, Euro series methods and uh, support RTM debt for the uh, training and the deployment. So uh, uh, I will just uh, uh, briefly introduce ML Detection 3D, which is the most uh, comprehensive library for 3D perception. And it supports many uh, tasks, as you can see, uh, including the point cloud-based uh, 3D object detection and image-based 3D object detection. So as the uh, indoor and outdoor data sets and the multimodality 3D object detection and point cloud segmentation in indoor and outdoor scenarios. 
also uh, uh, I, uh, we have a uh, MMU Euro and it supports, as you can see, Euro V5, V6, X, and Euro V8. And so as the RTM debt, and uh, its goal is to provide uh, the industrial uh, real-time models. Uh, and in the future, it will also support like a rotated object detection and post estimation. And it provides very uh, comprehensive documents for you to get started. So now I'm going to uh, uh, use a, a tutorial to uh, to uh, uh, reveal that how to use customized data set with ME detection to accelerate your research. So, so you can see the uh, uh, collab tutorial. Okay. So uh, in this tutorial, I will introduce uh, how to use M detection for the instance segmentation. So basically, uh, we uh, now in M detection three, uh, we could uh, install M detection easily, and uh, by the commands. Basically, we install Open Meme and MM Engine, and we use Meme to install MMCV, and uh, then we uh, could get Chrome the um, main branch of M detection and directly use it. So. Uh, uh, we uh, for uh, usually we uh, we will check the uh, version of torch region and torch so as MMCV first as you can see and uh, and we also need to check whether the CUDA is available. So uh, after that, uh, many people previously you you might ask uh, uh, how to use the configs. So here is also a, a very brief example. So basically, we could import M, uh, ResNet from the ML detection uh, backbones, and we could initiate the ResNet uh, by the uh, by this live code, and we could write a similar thing in the config. Basically, we uh, used a uh, registry of models, and we uh, basically. Uh, took this part into the configs and we set the type ResNet and we could uh, use models build to build the ResNet. So uh, here is the mapping uh, between the uh, API documentation and uh, to the config. And we also have new features about the config and you might uh, be interested and you can find it in the MM engine. So uh, now I will introduce how to perform inference with an ML detection detector. So here we use a two-stage detector, a uh, mask RCN. And uh, we could also use a, a mean to first choose a model first. And you will see that we could find uh, many models in our model zoom. And here we just uh, uh, choose the uh, use mean to directly download the mask RCN pretend. Uh, from the model zoo, and it is very uh, simple for you and to search a model that meets you uh, meets your needs and and directly download the model by the uh, meme, and uh, we could conduct the inference. Basically, we need to uh, set a config file uh, which is already in the meditation configs directory, and we use the checkpoint uh, downloaded before and we uh, initialize the detector. And you can see that uh, the model is, uh, the checkpoints has been correctly uh, loaded. And then we could do the inference. Basically we uh, use MME CV to read an image and we send it to the inference detector API. And we could plot uh, the results here. So uh, you can see that uh, the segmentation results actually is not bad. And then uh, we will go through how to uh, train uh, object detector with a customized data set. So basically we just need to support a new data set. Uh, for instance, segmentation, we need to convert, convert uh, the customized data set to the COCO format so that we could uh, train and evaluate uh, on, on the segmentation set. So uh, here we, I use a uh, uh, common use the uh, uh, tiny data set named the Banru data set, which is a data set of Banru images. And we could uh, unzip the file and we will uh, need to uh, see the structure of the data set. So uh, when we do deep learning, the most important thing is to uh, 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 
dig into your data sets and uh, uh, carefully uh, know uh, the contents. So basically, we could see the structures here. Uh, it contains the chain images, and uh, uh, it also uh, contains the chain set and validation set. And we also have the annotations like the uh, val region data JSON. And we also have the training set, uh, the chain JSON for the uh, uh, for the training set. So uh, we then we need to go through the annotation file to see what's in it. Yeah. Okay, so I directly read the uh, unzip log. So basically we could use the tree, uh, tree command in the Linux to have a, a better view of the dataset structure. So you can see that uh, the training images and the validation images, and so as the annotation JSON file. So then we need to, uh, or we could check the image for uh, for check. Uh, as you can see. So basically, it's new images, and we need to uh, uh, know the structure of the JSON. So as you can see, that it contains several keys. Basically, we need to uh, we need the file name, and we need to uh, the bounding box annotations and the instance annotation annotations. So they are stored in the all points X and all points Y, and uh, this is the label me uh, structure, and we need to convert it to the Coco format. Uh, show in this. Uh, show here. So basically, uh, it has the three uh, keys, images, annotations, and categories. And for annotations, we have the these keys. And we need to convert the points X and point Y to the segmentation format. So uh, here is a function uh, here. So uh, I already done uh, these things. Basically, it goes through the uh, information file and it will prepare the keys and convert the xy points to the polygon formats and obtain the binding policies by the points and uh, make it to the data annotation format as you can see these keys are matched with the uh, annotation format requirements and then we could uh, use this function to convert all the annotation annotations and we could and then we have a JSON file in the Coco format, and we could use it for the training. So uh, here we take a simple config uh, in our model zoo, and we uh, use it as a basic to modify it for the object detection. So we need to set the meta info, which is the classes and the plate for the instance annotation. And then we modify the annotation file and the data root for, uh, for training. And uh, after set the several attributes of the data set, we also uh, set the test data loader uh, to the validation data loader, and we uh, set the number of classes for the training, uh, because the original model is uh, has 80 classes for Coco, and we uh, now we only have one class. And we also set the load from key, which allows the model to uh, use the pre-trained object detectors to obtain a better performance. And we also set a validation interval to short the validation time. And because we only have one GPU, so we also uh, uh, downscale the learning rate and set the random seed. And we could use the TensorBoard visualization backend. So then we could train a new data, a new detector. Uh, basically, uh, in OpenAML Lab, we use runner to train the models. So we send uh, send the config to the runner, and we and we execute it. And you can see that uh, the total config uh, of the of this training experiments. And then we uh, we could uh, we, we will also see that uh, the hooks uh, will that will be executed in the training process. Uh, basically, we have several. Uh, points and you can more uh, you can know more about the training hooks in the IBM engine, and we simply run the training by runner dot train, and you will see the whole training process. And it will allow the models, and uh, there will be key mismatch because uh, 
the we said the number of classes to one, but the model uh, our prediction model has uh, eighty classes, and then we will see the training starts, and it will take three minutes. So we could uh, directly uh, uh, you can see that there are uh, several keys that you could use to monitor the training process, like memory, memory, and the losses, and the uh, the losses for each head. And we could also observe the uh, accuracies in the classification head. And uh, we could also uh, use TensorBot to visualize the process. So basically, uh, we, uh, uh, the TensorBot should already be installed. So we could skip uh, this installation process and we use the load extent TensorBot to load it. And you will see the, uh, so this is the results uh, executed below, but you could already see that uh, the uh, box AP goes through the training and yeah, and you will also see the box AP, uh, and we could also see the loss here. Uh, yeah, but uh, it might be uh, overrated by the training process. So you could also see that uh, the the evaluation process that uh, it will be executed after three epoch, and you can see that the box AP is very high actually, and. Uh, so, uh, uh, because the time is limited, so I will uh, directly uh, go through the following parts. So, uh, after training, you could also uh, you could uh, observe the log, uh, including the losses and the AP in the tensor board, and then you could use uh, the model to take a test. Basically, uh, you uh, you could uh, still use MMCV to read the image, and you use the checkpoint file and initialize it, and then you do the visualization, and you will see that the model basically segments uh, the band rooms uh, well. And uh, after that, if you are also interested uh, in more uh, segmentation models, you could uh, try uh, like try cascade methods in ME detection model two, and you could also try single stage methods, uh, which is uh, more commonly used in uh, a new trend in the community. And you could also try semantic segmentation uh, by exploring MM segmentation, and it also has the collab tutorial here. So uh, that's all for the tutorial of MM detection and uh, uh, so it seems that uh, we uh, we could take uh, do you have any questions for the audience yeah yeah so uh, it's QA time is there a plan to integrate the segment anything model into MM detection uh, yeah, actually, uh, we we have plan for that, and uh, and you can stay tuned for the new updates. Yeah, and also we already have some uh demos in the uh, Open MLab playground that already integrate to uh Sam for uh, uh take Sam uh, the pre train Sam for inference and uh, use it uh to uh we already made some uh very fancy demos with the uh, segment anything model in the uh, open uh projects yeah so so basically uh we uh, we support to inference with Sam now but we uh currently we uh have not supported to train segment and anything model yet. Yeah, but uh, but I think uh, it will be easy to to do that. Yeah, yeah. the the question uh, the question is um, uh, I will repeat that again. Uh, will MM detection uh, go beyond uh, visual tasks and go to multitasks? Uh, I think the answer is yes. And when we will uh, add more uh, content to the question? Uh, will any uh so so is the question about uh support multiple tasks in support multi task running in ML detection or uh, multimodal oh multimodal okay so uh so basically now we uh, as you can see that in uh ML detection uh, uh we already support uh, a project named Datic. so basically uh uh also, we also uh, have many applications uh, projects in the community that based on M detection, 
uh, about the open vocabulary object detection. So uh, currently, uh, it's about uh, to use the visual language, uh, Prussian visual language foundation models for the open vocabulary detection. Uh, basically, it's one case for the uh, multimodality. And uh, we also have a uh, like uh, the multi-portality perception, uh, like using the image and the point clouds in M detection 3D. So uh, we are also interested in support more uh, uh, visual language tasks in the future. And uh, maybe uh, we will support vision LM or pixel to sequence in M detection. Yeah. So we do have plans also in M prediction. Uh, it is uh, it has uh, been supporting many visual language tasks like uh, the v, uh, visual uh, 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 image caption on the many uh, visual language foundation models like clip in the MI prediction. Uh, 